Okay, so we are doing electrolytic salts. For that, we need one beaker into which we put some water into the water we put some copper sulfate um, it's like a bluey powder CuSO4 so there's your copper sulfate we stir it up and then we have two electrodes one, there's our copper electrode, and here's another piece of just copper from a, from flex. So we've got two copper electrodes. So is copper from copper one? Um, it should be. Okay, so there we have an electrolytic cell. What we have is the following reaction. Cu metal goes to form reversibly. Let's see if we can get a better thing. Cu plus 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 two electrons. And uh, the sulfate is also there, SO4 two minus. So we take copper sulfate and we dissolve it and now we've got an equilibrium situation where copper metal is in equilibrium with its ions. All happy so far. Pascal, please pay attention here. So now you may remember Le Chatelier's principle. If something's in equilibrium, how can we get the equilibrium to shift to the left or the right? What do you remember about Le Chatelier's principle? How can we get this? Copper metal is a solid, this is aqueous. How can we get the copper to dissolve? How can we go from there to there more fast? Le Chatelier says what? If you have a system in equilibrium, which we have, and you add something to one side or subtract something from one side, it will shift in the direction to reduce what you've done. So, what will happen if I remove electrons from the system? Which direction will the whole... Remember, all of these are in the system. You can't separate them. They're all touching each other. But we can remove electrons. Then what will happen? Any ideas? Which direction will it go? Left or right? It, if we remove those, it's going to try and replace those by going copper solid goes to form copper aqueous end and then it will release two electrons. Everyone happy with that? Yes. Okay. So how will we persuade the copper to lose electrons? Well, we take a battery, we take which is the positive, this one, and we attach it to the copper. And now the copper is being persuaded to lose its electrons to the battery. But unfortunately, electricity needs a closed circuit. So we must close the circuit by having to the negative side of the battery. And it goes to the other copper electrode and now we've got a closed circuit 
There's our closed circuits attached to the battery and now we're going to see something happening. Okay. Now, um, there's another thing we can do. What if we add electrons? So if we remove the electrons, it's going to go that way. What happens if we make the one terminal negative? Which way will it go? So let's add electrons to the system. We've added to the right. So which direction is it going to go? To the left. So now your copper sulfate, Cu++, plus, plus, plus the two electrons, you're adding and adding and adding, is going to form copper solid. Does that make sense? So, we could do this, we have one reaction that's this direction, and then we've got another one which is in this direction, which is Cu, we adding an electron plus plus, and it's going to form copper metal. So, in this case, we're adding electrons, by making it to the negative terminal and in this case we remove electrons or subtract electrons by connecting to the positive terminal. Okay, so what are we going to see happen here? When we subtract electrons, what's going to happen to this? goes from solid to aqueous. Your copper is going to dissolve. So this electrode, the copper dissolves into that. But at this electrode, the copper what? If, it, if we're adding electrons to the copper 2 plus, it solidifies. it solidifies and it goes to form solid. solid copper. So in this case, the copper dissolves, and in this case, the copper forms more. Now, if you've got two electrodes like this, you can't really see it much. I think I'm seeing some sort of blackish powder that wasn't there before. I'm seeing some black powder form on here. And this is attached to the negative electrode. Negative electrode. Is something supposed to form at the negative electrode? Negative terminal? Copper is forming. So this stuff that is forming on here must be what? That's copper. Okay. You see it's gone black. Is it? It's black and green. Right. So that's the copper that's forming. The other is showing my electric is dissolved. You see on the green like it's the following. Let's take to the negative electrode. Why don't we take this spoon? Is the spoon silver? Spoon silver? Yes. yes. And let's attach that to the negative electrode and that to the positive. And then let's just leave it a while. And let's just see if we can get copper to form on our spoon. Now here's another way of thinking about it. 
Anyone know what we call these things that stick into uh, a solution? What do we call those rods? Electrodes. Electrode. And what is the, that side of the battery called? Uh, the, the negative. The negative. So this is the negative electrode and this is your positive, positive electrode. Now what do we get, and this is your, what do we call the solution inside that conducts electricity? I don't know. Electrolysis. Electrolyte. Oh, the, the solution <laughs> conducting <laughs> electricity. Now, one thing I like about study and master, it gives the definition of electrolysis. Go to your index, it'll say electrolysis is the breaking down of a substance when an electric current passes through it. All your definitions are at the back in the index. Now, what, do you, what is going to happen at this negative electrode? Well, look, we've got Cu plus plus ions in solution. Are they going to go to the positive electrode or the negative electrode? Which direction are they attracted to? Positive copper ions are attracted to the... Okay, let's think first. Do you like attract or unlike attract in nature? Unlike attract. North attracts south, positive attracts negative. So which direction are these ions going? To the negative electrode. When they get there, they gain two of the electrons on that electrode. And what do they form here? What do we see forming here? What's this that I've drawn? You saw that black stuff on the electrode. Copper. That's copper form. Now, at this electrode, the electrons are being stolen from the copper. And at this electrode, the copper has its electron pulled away from it. It moves, it shifts its equilibrium towards the copper ion. And copper, when it's lost at electrons, forms copper ions. So at this electrode, what are you going to see happen? It's going to dissolve. All that be? Now, have a look at that spoon. Okay, for the camera. What is that that's forming on there? We are electroplating this spoon with copper. We're copper plating it. You see that that's in just a few minutes. We turn our spoon from a nice shiny um, stainless steel to copper plating. And that's how I make white stainless nice and copper. See how easy that was? It has to be a juicy sauce. So, who needed one to go? Who got one to go? In love. Who got one to go? Um, I have a question whether it's sometimes it sticks, sometimes it doesn't. Can we give it a go? Okay. Just see if you can rub or cut. Okay, so it comes for in places, so it's not stuck very well. In fact, we managed to rub it off. So there must be some way that they make it stick there. But this is maybe they heat it once it's on to make it stick properly. But that's the essence of copper plating. So then maybe they prepare it somewhere. Now, when something loses electrons, 
which it's doing here to dissolve. Who knows what that process is called? The loss of electrons is called L C O. Leo. Loss of electrons is oxidation. So this is oxidation. From the mnemonic loss of electrons is oxidation. Or if you prefer O I L. Oxidation is a loss. Either mnemonic. Now the loss of electrons always occurs, or oxidation occurs at the anode. So which electrode here is the anode? The positive or the negative one? The one that oxidizes, where oxidation occurs, is always the anode. Have I already said one of these is oxidizing and dissolving? Yes, the positive. So this must be the anode. The positive electrode in this case is the anode. Here, where reduction occurs, in other words, where it gains electrons, this is the cathode. Questions? Any questions? Now, very bad teaching technique is to go and immediately after you've done that, do something very similar but different. And I'm going to break that rule in a moment. So please try and just think of this for a moment and see if it makes sense to you. Another thing I want to ask you is what form of energy went in and what form of energy came out? What did I start this experiment with? What's this thing? So what is that inputting? So what goes in is electricity in and energy is always converted to something. What comes out of the system? Oh, and what am I doing? What is the energy doing? Making? Chemistry. So Chemical electric, el chemical energy out. All happy with it? All happy with it? No? Okay, watch the video. <laughs> It'll be there. Now, like I say, it's bad teaching technique, but we have limited time. Now I've got to go on to the next type of cell, which is called a voltaic or galvanic cell. So we dealt with electrolytic cells. There you go. How many beakers did I need for electrolytic cell? One. What came in? Electricity. Electricity. What came out? Electricity. Chemical energy. Which the anode was positive or negative? Positive. positive. The cathode was negative. negative. And everything's going to be the reverse here. Everything's going to be opposite with these two cells. We're going to put in chemical energy, we're going to get out electrical. Our anode is going to be negative, our cathode is going to be positive. We need two beakers. Okay, so let's make the simplest type of, oh yeah, here, I was just going to cut this battery open. If you want to get zinc, I normally just cut the battery open and you get the zinc. is the metal that surrounds the battery and then you the metal on the outside is zinc 
So, if I want zinc, which I'm just showing you, doesn't take long, just don't cut your fingers off. You just pull the metal off from the outside of the battery. And then you've got yourself some zinc. Okay, so there you've got some zinc, but I don't have to. The school's got some zinc. There. So to make this battery, we take a lemon, which I'm, came from my tree at home. I'm hoping to reuse it. You poke it into the lemon. Then you take some copper and you poke it into the lemon. Then you take a thing, a, a multimeter, turn it on to volts. Take a lead, that's to the positive, and put it to one side of your lemon. Doesn't matter, we'll see in a moment if I'm right. Take another electrode, attach it to there, and let's see if we get a current. If we don't, our face will blush. Do you see a voltage from our lemon? 0 0.96. First of all, we've got it correctly attached. It doesn't say negative. So we've got just under 1 volt. 0.96 volts using a lemon, piece of zinc, and a piece of copper. And as good scientists, what are we going to do? Experiment. We're going to write down our results. So, let's just say, okay, let's first see which is attached to which. To the positive side, it's attached to the copper. Okay, so the, this red is attached to the copper. So the positive side is copper, the negative electrode is zinc, and the voltage is north point nine.